Welcome to our homestead. Today I'm going to talk about some very important points that you're just not going to hear very often about installing solar for your home. Friends, I will always strive to bring you a big picture, holistic view of everything I do here. So let's get into six things they are not telling you about solar. Let's go. Number one is location of your property in the United States. There are peaks on our charts that you can check out like this one that are going to tell you how much sun you get on average. And that's gonna determine how well the system is gonna work for your home. The second part of that is location of your panels. Now, I personally recommend ground mounts for a lot of different reasons, but for us, it was the obvious choice. Where we have our panels, that is the absolute sunniest place on our property. Because we have very large trees that frame our property, and they completely shade out the roof for most of the day. The physical location of your property is going to dictate whether you have the ability to really use solar or not. It's either going to be hot or cold, wet or dry, cloudy or sunny, it depends. So for places like Alaska, I might not recommend solar as a whole home, off-grid, energy source, but maybe a supplemental source. Down here in East Texas, it's actually right on the edge if you look at this chart again. The more west you go in Texas, the more sun you have, and that is going to determine different things about your system on its size and so on and so forth. And for us here in the piney woods of East Texas, it was more challenging to find space on the property that wasn't shaded out by large trees. Now, if you are in suburbia, I've seen plenty of examples where people do put the panels on a ground mount in their backyard. But are there enough panels to generate enough power for their modern suburban home? Maybe, maybe not. And I'm going to touch on that a little bit more in the second point, which is solar system cost. But let's get out of this rain to do so. Okay, let's talk about costs. So equating the amount of money that you spend on grid power versus the amount of money that you spend purchasing a solar system is just not a one-to-one -one comparison. And in many parts of the country, grid power is extremely affordable. But when those door-to-door -door salesmen come to your house and try to sell you on purchasing a system, they are really not going to talk about that. The reason that I have solar and I purchase my own solar equipment from a local solar supplier called Signature Solar is because of the other intangibles. And those are things like independence, grid reliability, and basically the control of the power for my house. And for you, a fourth reason might be the environmental aspect. For me personally, that wasn't a concern of mine. And with those things in mind, everybody's payback period on their equipment is going to be completely different. You need to crunch the numbers for your specific financial situation and not let it be dictated by somebody trying to sell you a financial product as a solar product. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Yes, cost for solar equipment can be high if you are starting off with trying to power a modern size home with all modern electric equipment and trying to be off-grid for a week if there's a storm. And again, that's why I'm a proponent of DIY solar, where you can start small and scale up if that's what your budget allows. And that's gonna reduce the initial cost investment impact on you and your family. Many solar financial companies out there that are selling these solar systems and some installers that are selling the systems are not gonna allow you to start very small and then continually add onto it and scale up from there. They wanna sell you the entire package all at one time. There are a few good ones out there, don't get me wrong. That will cater to your needs. You can also look at some solar supply houses out there like Signature Solar, which has a design service for you and they will work along with you for whatever your needs are. If you tell them that you wanna start small and scale up, they will help you with that. If you're interested in getting any of the equipment that you see in our videos, we have the links in the description below the video along with a coupon code for you. So go check those out. And additionally, if you go check out our solar playlist listed above, I go through different systems that we started here on the property that we started small and are able to be scaled up. So go check those out. Two more things that impact cost. One is the solar federal tax credit. 
Now, if you've been listening to the news, that might go away very, very soon. So that can never be relied upon 100% to be there to lower the initial investment cost. But many installers and solar companies won't tell you that. Also, in terms of cost, do not rely on selling power back to the grid because many, many power companies out there right now are getting rid of their agreements where a solar customer can sell back to the grid. I think this is especially prevalent in California right now where people are left with big bills where they thought they were gonna actually be able to sell power back to the grid. That's another reason why I recommend never installing a grid tied system or pure grid tied system. Always install a hybrid system, which can sell back to the grid or an off grid system. Okay, the next one is living with solar is not like living with grid power. Now, the one caveat to that is if you are able to purchase a solar system that is huge. Basically, you have a ton of battery storage, you have a lot of panels and enough uh, inverting power to run your entire house. But there are not too many people out there who are gonna be able to purchase a system like that. You have to be mindful of the loads and things that you are using in your house so you don't overload an inverter or drain the batteries too quickly if you've got a week and a half of rain like we do right now. Now, yes, if you are in a tiny house or a small cabin off-grid and you don't have a lot of electrical loads, you can get away with doing a lot more than connecting a system to a modern home. So when running a solar system, especially off-grid, you have to pay attention if you're doing the laundry at the same time as you're running all the air conditioners or running the electric dryer or stove. Then your well pump kicks on and you overload the system. So it's not like living with grid power. Okay, the next point is solar companies go out of business all the time. And that's even the big ones. In 2023 alone, 100 big solar installers went out of business. The industry is very volatile between manufacturers, the solar finance companies, and installers. Usually things are stable with companies that are suppliers because those suppliers are working very hard to find new products for their customers at low costs. And that's why I like DIYing your own system and using a supplier that has a design team that will help you out. Also, that has a technical support team and things like that. Two companies like that are Signature Solar and Current Connected. And they both do fantastic jobs and are continuing to actually grow. It is very hard right now to navigate all of the companies out there and find people that will be around for a while and are reputable. I'm really blessed to have found one that I get my equipment from. And sadly, when all of these other companies have gone out of business, they have left work unfinished, systems that don't work, there's no way to contact anybody to get the system reconnected or working, anything like that. And warranties are now pretty much void. That's an installation warranty. Many of the manufacturers out there will still have manufacturer's warranties attached to their equipment. But that's been another very challenging thing for people to get taken care of who've had a solar company go bankrupt in the middle of an installation on their home. That's why I want you to DIY your system. There's a great DIY solar forum out there where I learned a lot. There's YouTubers out there that I learned a lot from, electricians that I learned a lot from, and you can do it and I encourage you to do it. That is, of course, where it is legal to do so. But pay cash for your system, start small, add on to it and add on to it until you can come to something that is running your entire modern house completely off-grid. If you start with something small, you can start with what's called a critical loads panel, and that will power just a few circuits in your home in case of a power outage. So you can put the important ones on there and add over time. And I did a video about that up here. Okay, the next point is solar will probably impact your home and property insurance. It will probably raise it. There are a few ways to mitigate that. One of those is by putting your panels on a ground mount instead of mounting them on the roof of your home. Two is by getting equipment that is actually weather rated that can go outside. We have an inverter right now that is weather rated that is powering our house. And we also have some batteries in a cabinet that are located outside completely weatherproof. If you wanna see the video for that installation, click up here. Okay, the last point 
If you are looking for solar panels because you want to be environmentally friendly, I'm going to tell you that they are not as green as you think they are. Solar panels, as well as lithium iron phosphate batteries, take a lot of energy to produce from mining to manufacturing on the front end. Lithium iron phosphate batteries specifically, there are some pollutants that are generated after the lithium and cobalt mining process. However, after manufacturing is done, the emissions on solar panels and the batteries is zero. And the life cycle for solar panels is about 25 years. The life cycle for the lithium batteries is about 15 years. So you will have to weigh that in terms of longevity compared with grid power generation types. If it's nuclear, then nuclear power is fairly clean compared with coal, which isn't very clean, compared with natural gas that's in the middle. But I know for a fact that the embodied energy to get oil out of the ground or to get natural gas out of the ground is less at the beginning than it is for solar panels and batteries. Additionally, solar panel recycling and battery recycling, which are very feasible and are done, do have some pollution problems on the back end when those are being recycled. And there is a study from Germany that shows on the front end that solar panel production actually produces more CO2 than it does to make a regular gasoline passenger car. And this is Germany we're talking about, which is all green. Many won't tell you what I just told you, but I want you to do your own research for yourself as well. So those six things you are not going to hear every day from your local solar salesman who comes knocking on your door. I hope this information has been valuable for you in making your decision whether to go solar or not. Obviously, I think it's a great technology and it powers my house beautifully. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me in the comment section below the video. Now go check out this video right here, which talks about this wall mountable 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Have a beautiful blessed day. See you next time.